Hey there folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. And I don't know a lot of people watch the Super Bowl. I did not. I'm just not much into football. I know the Eagles won. Congrats to them. I know there's a lot of Super Bowl trailers which I haven't seen yet. Except Solo, which I didn't care for. But the other trailers I haven't seen yet. I will. Down the road. But I spent the day actually watching the Man With No Name trilogy. I received this from a very nice guy named Sonny Bean and he didn't ask for this or anything it just I saw these and went man I haven't seen these in a while love to give these a look. And it's a great trilogy of movies. I haven't reviewed a lot of westerns because westerns I didn't grow up with westerns there are some I like. Young Guns is my favorite. That's the one I grew up with. With the most, Emilio Estevez, Lou Diamond Phillips, Kiefer Sutherland. Young Guns 2, I'm not much a fan of. I'm not going to get into that, although I do like the soundtrack to it. I like some of Emilio's lines in that, but the story I didn't care for. The ending I didn't care for. High Plains Drifter I enjoy. I there's a few others, but I do enjoy these movies. Sergio Leone. I have not seen Once Upon a Time in the West, which Sergio did. But we get into... Oh, They Call Me Trinity. That's another one I enjoy. But we get into this one, A Fistful of Dollars. Where Clint Eastwood, he was on the TV show Rawhide. And he's like, hey, got a call, go overseas do this small little budgeted flick. Eastwood said yes because hey, gets the star in a movie and if it's a bad movie no one's gonna see it because it's overseas. But this became successful and then they kept making them there and thus these films came out in the US about a year apart. I believe this came out in 1964, 65, and then 66. As the man with no name, part of the advertising, although technically he has names in these like Manco and others, and technically they're not related to each other even though Eastwood does have the poncho and the same look, but technically he's supposed to be playing different characters. I mean even Lee Van Cleef he plays two very different characters in these two movies. So they're not really connected, but it's still labeled a trilogy. Because of Eastwood, the type of outfit he wears, and the style. The Sergio Leone style. Where it has now become known as the Spaghetti Westerns. And I like, I haven't seen tons of Spaghetti Westerns, but the ones I've seen... I enjoy the feel of them. I don't know if I want to say atmosphere, but they're like the down and dirty westerns. They're the westerns with a bit of style and a bit of, I don't know if I want to say grit, I don't know if I want to say edge, but they're more of the westerns I care to see than John Wayne. And no disrespect to John Wayne, I just was never big into John Wayne. I'm fine with the guy as an actor, personality, however you want to put it. I'm just not really... When I watch it, I'm like, eh. That sort of feeling. And if you were asking which I prefer more, I prefer these. Or High Plains Drifter and others. A Fistful of Dollars is pretty much a take on Yojimbo. And even got to a point, as I said, one of the features that it was pretty much had Yojimbo in the title, I believe in Japan. And Yojimbo, the story of, and I haven't seen the original Yojimbo, but I've seen the films that took stuff from it, ripped it off, however you want to put it. Like I've seen this movie. Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis, which I really enjoy, where it's a guy playing off two 
rivals and getting paid by one and then getting paid by the other and working them against each other. And there's been other movies that do that, but the one that stick out is feels like last main standing, this movie. And right from the get-go, it really shows the style and different feel compared to other westerns, especially at the time. Like the animated titles, where you have these figures, sort of shadows running and getting shot, and you have that great story by Ennio, Ennio Morricone, which he's a big factor in all three of these movies. Great store on each of them. Different store, he didn't just reuse the store, had the same feel, but he did different stuff in each one. And skipping ahead, it's funny, the good, the bad, and the ugly theme, I remember thinking, ah, I'm not a big fan because you hear it all the time. But when it's used in that movie, I realize when that theme is used with Sergio Leone's images, it gives it that power. And so when I listen to the music on YouTube and such, I think of that, and that gives it its power. Like to me, when you just put it with Chuck Norris and Expendables 2, for me, it doesn't work. Of course, for Chuck Norris and Expendables 2, I would have preferred something from one of Chuck Norris's movies, like Mobile Wolf McQuay, Delta Force, Invasion USA, Missing Action, but that's just me. I'm getting ahead of myself. But you have these very cool animated titles, and the man with no name, with his poncho, coming into town, sees his kid getting shot at, steered. And it has a nice feel to it. I would say it's hard to pick which is my favorite. It's probably probably between this and a few dollars more. I think out of all of them, this probably has the better pacing. But for a few dollars more, I really like the stuff between him and Lee Van Cleef. I do like the good, the bad, and the ugly, but I, I like this and the second one a bit more. I like the feel. I like the look. Sergio Leone has that thing where he takes his time, which you really see in films like Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and he has the up-close faces, and he really picks out people who have a distinct, different face. Each person has a distinct face to them. And certain moments of silence, or certain moments with no dialogue, but just the music playing. So you just have Clint on his horse, or really his mule, going by this noose. And he goes into town, and he gets shot at, shot at and it runs off. And he, uh, Clint Eastwood does a great job in all three of these movies. He has a wonderful presence, the look, the squinty eyed look, the demeanor, just total badass demeanor. Apparently there's more dialogue and he always said, cut the dialogue, cut the dialogue. Which reminds me of Stallone in First Blood, where that had a lot more dialogue and Sly said, cut the dialogue, cut the dialogue. And sometimes that does work. Like it worked in First Blood and it works in these movies. So then when Clint just says hello after he's hanging off the log and his animal rode off and he looks at a guy like, hello. And one thing leads to another and he walks by and he, those guys who shot at him and he tells the guy, get three coffins ready. And he, I like the dialogue he says. I don't think it's nice, you laughing. See, my mule don't like people laughing. Just a crazy idea, you're laughing at him. Now, if you apologize, I don't know you're going to. Might convince him that you really didn't mean it. And then they stop laughing. Pop, pop, pop. Kills all four of them. And then his line, my mistake, four coffins. And just the way... Like, Sergio Leone, for Western, he knew how to build suspense for Western. I would say he was definitely the best guy to build suspense in a Western. And again, the great music by Ennio Morricone really works in its favor. 
And again, it's a very simple story. You've seen Yojimbo, or you've seen Phil's later, like Last Man Standing, you get the idea. He plays these two guys who run this little town that has like five people in it. Really like teeny tiny, barely even call it a town. There's a moment where he follows these men, they get wiped out by this Gatling gun. And there's one thing that I do wish, I mean granted, Sergio Leone, he never looked too realistic. He was never for the realistic approach. He's more for the stylistic approach. And I say that because I do wish there was a little bit of Sam Peckinpah that he could have taken from. I haven't seen a lot of Sam Peckinpah movies, but I've seen a lot of clips of Sam Peckinpah's movies. I know. I have like a thousand movies I want to watch, so it's just about... Uh, getting the time. But when you see the Gatling gun taking these guys out, yeah, I mean, we can look at it nowadays, you know, wow, I guess these bullets are invisible because you don't see anyone get hit, you don't see no blood, you don't see no bullet hits, and like, they're going with the Gatling gun, and it's like a thousand rounds a minute, but it doesn't hit any of the horses, and it hits all the guys perfectly, and again, you don't even see any bullet holes, but you know, that's a lot of westerns back in the day, except Sam Peckinpah, like the Wild Bunch and such. But, so yeah, I mean, when you watch it, it's like the Gatling gun, it's like they miss all the horses, they hit all the people, and it's like they're invisible bullets, invisible bullet holes, invisible blood. So, you know, I did, you know, part of me wishes. It would have been the Sam Peckerball type of violent. I think that would have been cool. But I can understand it was different time. <coughs> Just a different time that it was made. Just so it's not really a oh fuck this movie. It was more an observation. And pretty much Eastwood starts playing both sides. He gets two of those dead guys and places them at the cemetery nearby and then he tells one people hey I know uh, what they're doing and they took these guys out because they want their weapons and maybe there's some gold and such too and then tells them oh hey I heard that these two people are alive and then they both get there and while they're both doing that Clint goes in finds his money they someone's coming, punches them, and it's a woman. And it shows that he still, at the end of the day, is a decent person. Because he carries the woman out. Uh, the whole story is that she was with this character, one of the bad guys named Ramon. And really, she, this wife, and she's the wife of this guy, and she has a kid. She can't see them. She's not with them anymore, and Eastwood takes her to him, to them and tells them to leave. Even gives them the money he, he's collected so far. I mean, well, that stuff happens later on. I mean, before I, he carries her out, uh, then you know, he sees the mom hugging the kid during this exchange. Uh, he pretends to be drawn, rides off, and then he kills a few. He even throws a machete at a guy, which I thought was cool. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's not bloody, but like he throws this machete and sticks in a guy. And in my head, I'm thinking, stick around. <laughs> but wrong movie. Uh, but I thought that was cool, like him throwing a machete and sticking in a guy. And that's when he, he, he shoots a, before that, shot a bunch of people. Right, not as crazy as if you watch Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis. One of the reasons I love that film, that's Bruce Willis with two pistols. <laughs> so it's not like that, but it's still very cool. And that's where he gets the girl, gives it to her husband and her kid, gives her money and says, tells him to leave. And his explanation is, I knew someone like you once. And there's no one there to help, so get moving. And yeah, I thought that made the character... A decent character. He gets found out, gets beaten up, some people leave, uh, some come back, 
And he gets this big barrel and he rolls it down and he smashes into them, just sort of crushing them and escapes, hides in his coffin and leaves. Uh, one family, one of the two groups get pretty much massacred. And Issa was able to get away, heals up, and he comes back as this guy he befriended. He's in trouble, so he comes back to the town. And the first time I saw this scene that comes up was actually in Back to the Future Part 2, where Biff is in his hot tub in the alternate 1985 and is watching the scene. So the first time I saw it was from Back to the Future 2. So when I finally saw this, I went, oh, that's where that's from. I did it. And a great showdown finale where he's like, you know, aim for the heart. You always say aim for the heart. The bad guy keeps shooting with his rifle. Clint goes down, gets back up, goes down, gets back up. Runs out of bullets and you realize he had pretty much a bulletproof vest. He had this piece of armor, which I think is really cool. You know, back in the day, it's a really cool idea. It's a smart idea. I don't know if a lot of Westerns back in the day had that idea. But if not, that was a really cool idea. And he shoots the others, and then goes to the bad guy. You know, you once said that a rifle's better than this forty-five. Let's try reloading. Do this test, see who wins. And Clint wins and poof, kills the bad guy. Heads off in the town for whatever. Um, I, I I don't know if I really have any problems with the movie. Uh, the Blu-ray definitely has quite a few features, which is cool. You have the archives, Fistful of Dollars, where he shows, this is a guy who, big fan, aficionado of the movie, and this is him showing a lot of the different posters from different countries and other material when they came out. You also have a commentary by him, a new kind of hero, a few weeks in Spain, Clint Eastwood on the experience of making the film. Again, pretty much he was on Rawhide TV show. It was a chance to do a movie. Again, if it was bad, no one was going to see it. Um, he talked about how he had to take his own clothes because there was barely any money for, you know, a double for clothes. He talks about, I'm not sure if there's this one or one of, one of the others, because he does talk about each one of them. He talks about how the food was good, like they would have this big meal for food. He talked about how it was weird trying to act in the movie because everything was dubbed later. So he'd be trying to act in the scene and people would be in the background like playing around or playing catch or, you know, soccer or something. Like playing something or making noise because they knew they would do all the sound later, the, the crew. So it was tough for him to get used to that. But it seems like he really is proud of the movies and respects what Sergio did. You have a couple people who were on the production talking about the film. Renowned filmmaker Monto Hillman discusses the TV broadcast of A Fistful of Dollars. Pretty much when this appeared on network TV, the network TV thought that the man with no name was too. How do I put it? They wanted to make him more likable. Kind of like how John Carpenter talks about Bitro Low China, where the whole Ed Shin talking with the lawyer, I think it's after Jerry Harden, the talking with at the beginning, and Victor Wan does that little thing. It all starts very small. He had to add that in. But that's with the movie, not network TV. Or I guess, well, it's not the same. But I brought that up because John Carver said he was told to do that to make Jack Burton seem more like a hero. Kind of the same with here where they shot material, the network TV, shot material with Harry Dean Stanton and not with Clint. So you never saw Clint's face. You saw like a different actor in the poncho. They always had his face. And maybe they like cut to footage of Eastwood's face from a scene in the movie 
or like a close up of his eyes, but you never, for the most part, you never see the guy's face. And Harry Dean Stan goes, You're getting out of jail, but in order to do so, you need to do this for us. This is where you need to go. It aired one time, never aired again. So they talk about the making of it, and someone, one person, um, he talked about how he saw it when it came out and he had taped it. And when he was first watching, he's going, is this the movie? <laughs> but uh, I don't remember the movie starting off like this. And then they do show the footage. Again, Harry Dean Stan, one of the actors in that little bit of footage. Location comparisons, then to now. I don't think there's any dialogue. It's just sort of like the old here and the new here and they just flip back and forth. Ten radio spots, trailer, and a double bill trailer with a fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more. So, pretty damn good Blu-ray. Can't really think of much to complain about. Maybe, you know, little nitpick maybe some artwork on and the artwork is a little bit plain. I mean it's class as Eastwood with the the dawn, but maybe like a little bit more to the cover. But other than that, good Blu-ray and you know great Western. Clint Eastwood has a great presence and feel to his character, man a few words and he worked that had a great look to him, great presence to him. He was a badass. The Sergio Leone Spaghetti Western has a great feel, great look. The Emerald Coney score. The, I would say, of the three films, is definitely the shorter of the three films. So maybe that's why I think it has a little bit of a, the best pacing with the, between the three. And. You know, I said before I wasn't sure if I should use the word gritty, but maybe gritty is the right word compared to John Wayne films and such. There's definitely a bit more of a grittier western. It definitely more of a violent, but not violent in terms of gore, but violent in terms of. He want to say the atmosphere of it. And for dubbing, I don't know this. The, the dubbing in these films don't bother me. Like, I'm sure other other films maybe it would. Maybe there's some kind of fun to it. There's some kind of, like, for some reason it fits with the, the world of these movies. I mean, hell, just the one uh, thing I forgot to mention, when he comes out to face the bad guys, it's this beautiful shot where... He set this dynamite, and then the bad guys hear the dynamite, and all this gust of dust and wind, and it, it's over everything. And then the shot holds, and then the dust dissipates. I can't, so blow away, I can't talk right. It dissipates, and you reveal the man with no name standing there, looking at them. Right, it's all full of no CGI, no special effects, done for real. Have an actual guy there, bunch of dust, it fades, and then he's standing there. That was cool. That looked cool, it had a great feel to it. Really enjoyed this movie, A Fistful of Dollars. It is a classic western for a reason. Yeah. A Fistful of Dollars. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay tuned for my next review, which will be for a few dollars more. See you in a bit.